today. The American reportedly being held in North Korea is a U.S. soldier. It appears that soldier was taken into custody while touring a border village after crossing into North Korea without authorization. This is the first time this has happened uh, in quite a number of years. Washington correspondent Joe Khalil is live. So, Joe, what are we hearing today from U.S. officials? Well, Nicole, what we're hearing now is really remarkable details. The story is, is wild, honestly. What you've got is an American service member who is now in North Korean custody, now under detention uh, in the authoritarian country. But as you mentioned, it is because, according to reports, that person willfully chose to cross the line of demarcation from South Korea into North Korea themselves. You may call it a defection. We're not exactly sure what their intentions, motives were there, uh, but that is the reporting right now. And so we're talking about uh, private second class Travis King. Now, the story around him goes he was actually going to be facing some military discipline because he had done some things, ended up in a South Korean prison for assault charges. So he was going to be disciplined and sent back to the United States. And actually, he was on his way to the airport. The reports are he actually made it to the airport, was supposed to board a flight to Texas. So the military was sending him back. When he somehow got away from whoever's responsibility it was to oversee him, he ended up instead mingling with this tour group. And the tour group ended up back in uh, the demarcation zone, the area where it is a neutral area between South Korea and North Korea. And from there, the reporting goes, he ended up leaving that group and then running toward the North Korean side. Now, again, all of that incredibly unusual. It's hard to get into the mind of uh, somebody who would think that their better option would be to d go to North Korea rather than sort of face the music for uh, their crimes within you know, the military justice system. Uh, nonetheless, that is, according to what we have now, what happened. We talked to Congressman Brad Sherman. He's a longtime member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee about this. And he said that this whole episode really shines a light on the issues that the United States has with North Korea and the threats they pose. And by the way, he had no sympathy for this service member at all. Here's what Sherman told us. This man made his decision. It was an incredibly stupid mistake. We should not make any significant concession to North Korea in order to get him back. If we start empowering this regime, relieving sanctions from the regime, doing anything that reduces the likelihood that they will stop their nuclear program uh, because one individual uh, decided to make a personal and stupid mistake, um, We've got to look at the security of 300 million Americans, not just the one that we have a picture of. It's Congressman Sherman there, not mincing words. We also did hear from the White House on this. Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre uh, also said that the United States uh, defense is in touch with our counterparts in North Korea. What you're seeing on your screen right now is from the United Nations. They have also said that they are going to be working with North Korea to try to come to a resolution in this bizarre case right now. But you're going to have a real challenge uh, on our hands when it comes to the United States State Department and the Pentagon as they try to work through how to get this person back to the United States. Because you talk about all of the countries that we have strained relationships right now. North Korea is near the top of that list, Nicole, if not at the top of that list. So it is going to be a heavy lift to do the diplomatic work of trying to get uh, private second class uh, king back here to the United States. Nicole. Yeah, there's a lot to figure out with this one. Okay, Joe, thank you.